Hi, I'm Madeleine, and this is my quick introduction to factorising cubic polynomials. So here at the top, we've got an example of a cubic equation. And so why might we want to factorise this equation? We usually want to factorise so that we can find the roots. This may help us with an exam question, or if we want to sketch it and we need to know the intercepts. We know the shape of a cubic equation, but finding those intercepts can help us plot it. So factorization isn't a new concept, but how have we factorized until now? Well, we've mostly had quadratic equations, and we've been able to factorize them in a number of ways. Often with quadratics, it's fairly intuitive, especially if the numbers are nice and even, and we can just do it in our head. Or we've used methods like completing the square, or sometimes when we've got a multiple in front of the x squared term, we can use a table. So I don't know how you normally factorize, but I'll take you through my working for something like this. So I normally draw a table like this. And I know in front of one of them, one of the x terms, I'm going to have a 2. And in front of the other one, I'm going to have a 1. So I put that on this side of the table. And then I know I need to make minus 9. So I'm probably going to do that with 3 and minus 3. And I can have those the other way around or 9 and minus 1, and vice versa. And then really simply, I just like to times these and see which combination is going to give us the right result. So I've got 2 times minus 3, that's minus 6, plus 3. But that's not right, because we need positive 3. So let's try the other way. 2 times 3, that's 6, minus 3, that gives us 3x. We know we've got our 2x squared and our minus 9. So let's pop that in the brackets. Again, this is nothing you haven't seen before, We're just refreshing our memory here. Just to double check our maths, 2x squared plus 6x minus 3x minus 9. Yep, we've definitely factorised this. But factorising a cubic is not quite as simple as this, and making a table like this, um, finding all these combinations of different multiples that could get us the right answer, becomes really complicated as these numbers get larger or the order of this polynomial increases. So we need to change tactic and think of something else. But before we do that, let's simplify it. What if we just want to find if something's a factor? Maybe this is an exam question, this is quite often a sort of preliminary, preliminary one mark, is this a factor? Or, if we want to factorise it, let's start by finding a factor, and that's really going to help us later on. So, I haven't checked these, I don't know. Let's find out together if either one of these are factors of this polynomial equation. So, how do you think we might go about doing this? We want to see if x minus 3 is a factor of x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x. A really simple way of doing that is by finding out if when x is 3, this polynomial is equal to 0. We know 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. So let's see if we sub in p of 3 equals 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 is 9. Now what does this give us? We've got 27 minus 4 times 9, that's 36, plus 9. So what we've got really is 36 minus 36. So that does give us 0. So just by some really simple maths there, we found out that yes, x minus 3 is a factor of this equation. What happens if we change the number? Let's see if we found another factor. x minus 2. So what do you think? What value do we need to sub into this equation to find out if x minus 2 is a factor of this cubic? Yep, we're subbing in 2. What does that give us? We've got 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 6. What does this equal? 
8. Minus 4 times 4, that's 16. Plus 6. Now as we can see, in this instance, this does not equal 0. This equals minus 2. So that really quickly tells us that x minus 2 is not a factor of this equation. So just going back, we found one factor, but we know that's not enough to factorise this because we've got a cubic. If we had one factor and we had a quadratic, we'd probably be in good shape to factorise that. But there's a further step we need. Now I don't know whether you've seen that or not, or whether this will be a brief introduction, but this is actually one of my favourite parts of maths. So let's change slide and let's look at how we might factorise this cubic. So it's actually really similar to long division. And I'm just going to take you through it really slowly. So inside of the hutch, we have our x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x. And then outside, we've got x minus 3. So we know, because we've proven that when we sub in 3, this is equal to 0, we know when we divide this by this, we're going to be left with some quadratic equation in the form x squared plus bx. Let's see. And then from this, this is much more familiar. We'll be able to further factorise this and we'll have our three roots. But just coming back to this step, how might we do this? Well, when we multiply this, we need to multiply this by something that will give us x cubed. Since we don't have a number in front of the x or the x cubed, it's really simple. This first step is just going to be x squared. We know we need an x squared term. So when we multiply that by our x minus 3, we're definitely going to get our x cubed. So let's pop in x squared. But now, we know we've multiplied x by x squared, but we need to do that for the minus 3 as well. So simply underneath, we write this factor multiplied by x squared. So what is that? If we just take this out, we've got x squared, x minus 3. And so under this, in a really neat line, we're just adding x cubed, that's just expanding that first bit, minus 3x squared. And as we can see, that lines up. Now for our next step, we're looking at how we're going to find this, the x in this equation so that we have our x squared in this cubic. So I think you might have seen this, might be intuitive. You can see what we need to do is we need to subtract this new factor from this top equation. So let's put the subtract sign here so we can see that. We can draw a line. So we've got x cubed minus x cubed. That's zero. That falls out. We've dealt with x cubed. And we've got minus 4x squared minus minus 3x squared. So what's that? Minus 4 plus 3. We've got minus x squared left. So we make this new, and all we're doing now is we're repeating this first step. But instead of trying for this cubic, now we've got minus x squared plus 3x. We're just doing the exact same again, but for minus x squared plus 3x. So what do we need to multiply x by to get minus x squared? Just minus x. So all we do up here is pop in minus x. And now we need to do the exact same thing again. We've got minus x. And we're multiplying that by x minus 3. And we're just going to put that directly underneath. It really helps to keep things in line because if you miss a step or you get confused or you need to go back, you'll know exactly where you are and exactly where things cancel. So underneath, we've got minus x times x. We've got minus another x squared. This looks really familiar. And now we've got minus x times minus 3. We've got plus 3x. Now just as we did here, we need to subtract this from this. So we're going to put minus in here. And what are we left with? We've got minus x squared minus minus x squared. Well, that's 0. And we've got 3x minus 3x. That's also 0. So we've actually done it we found our x squared plus bx plus c. Now in this case, there was no c term. Often there will be, sometimes there won't be. So we've managed to factorise 
this x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x into x minus 3. We know that's our first root. And now we know that's multiplied by this second term, x squared minus x. I hope you'll forgive my shaky writing on the uh, <laughs> electronic whiteboard. Do you think we can factorise this any further? If we're looking at this from the perspective that ultimately we want to sketch this x cubed graph, we need three roots. We don't, we're not quite there. This looks really familiar and we can definitely factorise this further. In fact, it's really simple. They've both got a common factor of x. So if we just want to factorise x squared minus x, what are we going to do? Just going to take out a common factor of x. What's left? x minus 1. Simply sub that back in in place of this x squared minus x term. And we've got our fully factorised cubic equation. We've got p of x equals x. x minus 1 x minus 3. And so just for the sake of how we might use this, we can see the roots of this equation are going to be 0, 1, and 3. And so if we plotted this cubic equation, we'd expect there to be intercepts on the x-axis at 0, x equals 1 and x equals 3. And just so you believe me, and this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a scam, I, uh, I used Desmos to plot this equation. And on the next slide, you'll see we have intercepts at 0, 1, and 3. So we know we've definitely factorized it correctly, and we've found our roots. And there's loads more you can do with this. And um, next time, we can look at what happens if you don't have a factor, and what happens if you end up with a remainder here. What happens if this doesn't all drop out to zero? Thank you.